So, here we go. This is collaborative content to media. What do I mean by that? Well, um, it's all the things that don't fit into the core tools. Uh, Google knowledge sharing sessions. Things uh, like Google Calendar and email and Drive. And Google Forms and spreadsheets. Um, these are the things that are not that. Um, and many of them are, uh, because the Google, very collaborative and can support you um, in working together. And um, quite often they are more media focused. So we're going to be looking at the things that um, you might not have got around to trying and that uh, you may want to. So why should we collaborate anyway? Um, well, th there is a, more of an imperative to do more collaboration more often with more people. Um, and this presentation is just going to be showing you lots of things that are out there and really no grand vision, but just um, introducing some things that you can try uh, yourself and, and have a go with. And collaboration is a, is a funny idea anyway, because um, many people just sort of imagine, well I do, um, people sit working around a table and banging out a project and working together. And, um, but many of the time, much of the time, uh, collaboration is about connecting the dots for other people or just listening and contributing ideas and opinions or helping people to reach consensus and, or mediating certain things or it can be mentoring people, it can be helping people along and or just reflecting, being involved in a project or a, um, a work stream and just, just doing the thinking around it. So it's, it's not collaborating isn't this sort of let, let's get together and work synchronously or asynchronously. It can be very subtle and nuanced. Um, I mean, for example, just publishing what you have done can be collaborating in many ways because you're making available your, your more of your inner workings that might otherwise be available. Um, so why should we bother? Well, well, there's lots of promises about collaboration that will get cross-fertilization happening and then there will be magic or the work will be of a higher quality um, because we've got more people involved and that always works, doesn't it? Um, we'll be more efficient because we're collaborating. These are all questionable and uh, better accountability because we'll be able to see who did what. Well, that doesn't always work either. And, and you, you sort of think that transparency is a good thing, but maybe, you know, there are times when it shouldn't be. So, so, it's a, so collaboration is, it, it is a funny thing. We all know it's good. And I personally know that um, it's when I do my best work is, let's say, when other people are doing it, um, but when I'm working with other people. Um, so, so collaboration is, um, and everything about, I mean, I would say everything about collaboration is broken. Um, from working in documents, that's a very paper-based approach. Um, and uh, I often think that people will be better working in wikis than on working on the on documents and f even the idea of folders putting things in a single location um, is, is slightly crazy in a digital world where thing, things can be in a, a more relevant folder for different people in different places and meetings the I mean how many of us have sat in a meeting and just wondered why we were there or why what you why all those salaries have been paid all that time for that uh, for just to be um, just to um, just to be present. Um, so it's a lot about collaboration is broken. Um, so what can we do about it? Um, well, uh, the, there are lots of things to try that that um, that can actually make lots of the pain of, of if you like, modern life or or just work or um, go away. And there's going to be some unusualness along the way. You're going to feel at sea, and it's going to require change. Um, and it's um, and uh, there's always some pain to go through. And I know people that really don't like the aesthetics of Google Mail so much that they can barely bring themselves to um, to appreciate its um, its better qualities uh, just because of the way it looks. And, that, and that's not to sort of make fun of this. It, it's to say that that all of the things that we we do with our work um, are very deeply personal and uh, almost emotional things at times. Um, but one thing that I ask that you do do um, is get together as a team and maybe identify some of these pain points and do something about it. I, it sounds silly, but um, um, all of these tools um, can be used well and they can be used badly. And 
quite often lots of the, the improvements that can be made can be made with any tool. It doesn't, um, doesn't require a tool that is specifically made for your one particular thing. It just requires everybody being in agreement that, that we do it like this and we don't do it like that anymore um, because it will make everybody's life easier. So, so that is almost like the big play at the beginning. These are all going to be lots of tools we're going to see, but um, don't focus on those because um, focus more on the let's get rid of some of the, uh, the pain or, or let's improve things in certain areas. Um, so, having said all that, having said that, I'm going to show you the tools on the edge. I'm going to make a plea for you to think about using the core tools that are there. Um, because if you can develop a solution or, or improve something or, or move something forward using the core tools, your life is going to be a lot easier because you're going to know um, that people can log in, that, 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 that people can help you with it, that it can be, kept, it can be shared. So, um, you know, top tips along the, before we even start, use Google Groups when you can for sharing folders because, um, just because, um, it makes it easier to add people to a project group. Um, it's, um, there's all sorts of benefits for doing work in that way. Using things like using sensible file names. Um, it sounds very, very obvious, but, um, it helps you find things in Google Drive. There's so much stuff, you need to be able to find it. And I always use the advanced screen when I'm sharing. Let's, let's maybe just show you what I mean there. If I slip back to here, if I wanted to share this, um, if I wanted to share this uh, folder that's shared with these people, I always go straight to this screen because it shows me the different people who can see this and I can change um, this to say anyone with a link can edit or anyone at the University of New York with the link can so I can do some um, I never bother with the first screen in sharing um, that seems to have gone on a slide. Um, what other top tips I would say I, I don't know if you've ever used the uh, commenting uh, uh, feature in Google Docs um, if I wanted to get a comment like this from Mike I could say okay what do you think of this, Mike? And it, if I was to type the, the plus character, um, you can see that when I, it starts bringing up his email. Um, now what that does is, is when I do that, it sends an email to Mike um, because it knows that Mike can't access this document. So I'm gonna do that. And you never know, Mike might get back. But it also sends an email to Mike with a link to that exact bit. So this is really useful for when you're, you're making a collaborative document and you, you're wanting the opinions of, not necessarily the content, uh, from lots of people. Um, what are the... Um, oh, another, another completely uh, brilliant tip is that if you're, um, if you're stuck on the how to use any of the tools, in um, um, in the Google world, the Google Guru has literally hundreds of videos on how to um, do anything to uh, making a form, to making a visualization, to commenting on documents. And there's one on Google Hangouts, and they're all snappy. They all, hey there, what's this one? Welcome back to Google. Google. Five minutes. Over the past few months and weeks, Google's fantastic stuff. I I still regularly use this for certain formulas in spreadsheets or certain functions that I, I can't remember and I had something I need to brush up on that or using labels in, in email and those sorts of things, filters. If I don't know, um, it's worth spending a five minute video finding out. Just re recommend that. Oh, that's, I seem to have lost my presentation now. Here we are. So where were we? This sort of slickness would happen um, in. <laughs> in the uh, in the real presentation, by the way. Uh, yeah. So and also explore the features such as add-ons. Um, there are add-ons in all, pretty, in most of the tools now. Um, I would really recommend it. Recommend them just because um, there are tools add-ons in spreadsheets so that when somebody fills in a form it turns it into a document. This can make reading a 
textual data from a spreadsheet much, much easier because you're reading it from a document rather than uh, that one's called Autocrat. That's um, Autocrat, definitely worth a look. I'll probably cover these later. Um, so, just, this is just an example of Google Groups being used in the classroom where um, Sarah Perry used it to flip the classroom and start a discussion with a very large group of MA students before everybody got together um, so that everybody's viewpoints had kind of um, had solidified and polarised by the time. So that by the time they came to the classroom, it wasn't a case of telling them about the, uh, the, the, the subject. It was more ab about having the final debate, a much richer, much more involved debate about the subject. And that was massively successful with students. Um, in terms of projects, there's, um, we, we typically use it for every single, even short project, just because if somebody's um, added later to the project, they can catch up with all the previous messages and they're instantly given access to all the files. But also when somebody leaves, it's very handy to know that you can sort of get this project out of their hair, take them out of the group and then they lose access to the, the files and uh, the messages and, the, and that's not necessarily a security thing but it, it is very handy to be a sort of almost rid <laughs> uh, of a project when you're actually finished working on it. Um, so Google Documents, I was asking you to explore the add-ons so um, if, if I was to go to um, a document and I can look at the add-ons here uh, there's one of the add-ons I like is called Table of Content um, and all that does is show me a navigable way. Um, Word has this feature already, um, and I used to like it in Word, where I can, I can now skip straight down to data mining. Here it is, and, and work there. I find that, that a really valuable way of working on larger documents. Other add-ons um, include um, um, Word Cloud Generators, or uh, I've, got, I've got a Ryan Finder, and uh, the one that I was referring to here is, is called Text Factory. Uh, and that allows you to set up key commands to insert commonly used text um, all over the place. Um, so that if it's sort of, thank you very much for your letter, but we're, we're very busy. Um, good luck with your endeavours. Um, those sorts of things, um, those are well used. Um, yeah, so, so give add-ons in documents, in spreadsheets, um, give them an explore. Google Sites are available from your, um, from your menu here. Um, um, you can see Google Sites and you can just create a site. Um, some example sites, here's, here's two people used a Google site to do job sharing. Um, there is there's like a list feature in Google Sites, which is a bit unusual, but it allowed them to build a to-do list and work together. And but the, more importantly, it allowed them to sort of almost blog um, their what they'd been doing and where they were up to, and, and build up resources, uh, pages within the sites, and keep a track of things. And that that worked really well for them, which was quite a surprising thing that I discovered doing. Here's a group of people interested in informatics. Um, at York, um, created a site basically just to introduce themselves and their stuff to each other. And you can see here down the bottom, you can create, they're called gadgets, and you can create little previews onto either Google Groups, uh, the messages in there, or Google Drive folders so that you can start pooling resources uh, into here and, and have like a front end. And what I like about th this is that it contextualizes. You can say this is where we're going to put this stuff, or this is the link to these things, or these are the people over here, or, and so, so it's almost like a guidebook, um, a handbook to um, to a project. I, th I think almost every project should have its own Google site. Um, um, obviously, um, people should use the wiki um, for that sort of thing, but a Google site is, is a very um, nice way to, uh, as I say, contextualize information and also a way of making things if, if you want to share with the wider public as well. Um, Philosophy used Google Sites, interestingly, by automatically using AppScript uh, to create a, from a template, a site for every student instead of an essay. And what that allows, two things, interestingly, it allows them to add multimedia content like video and images and 
deal with um, hyperlinking pages together. But also, because you can, you can take a site away with you when you're gone, we, we could take a copy that was the final marked version, and a student could take a copy um, for their portfolio and continue working on it if they like. Um, and you do that just by changing who the owner is. You change the owner to a personal account, and then it moves outside your domain so that it doesn't disappear when the student account is gone. Um, that's worth knowing. Uh, one PhD student created, um, uh, and you can from the um, you can click these links from the slides. Created a um, site to for people to crowdsource the transcription and translation of um, an old French romantic poem, um, and used Google Groups so that people would ask to join, and then people who were in that group could then edit the site, and uh, you would they would then. Um, add the French and then the French to English um, um, as, as a group of people and this link to um, images of the this very old book um, at the British Library. That was a, a great use. Uh, here's a site that we've put together um, uh, that just has lots of pointer videos to learning the Google um, App Suite. Um, we found that um, Google was changing fast enough and there was enough resources out there that it was quicker to actually collect together um, the stuff um, that people need to know and then uh, and assemble it into one site. And you can make nice navigation down the left hand side uh, so that unlike a document which, which very much feels like a narrative that if you add some more stuff it, it tends to be at the bottom getting longer and longer. With the site you can people can dive in at the point they want. And here's a beautiful site about uh, developing digital literacy where um, a very clean design has been used to put all the information together very easy and very quickly. Um, go and explore that too. Uh, now, now, this is interesting from um, uh, the information strategy projects. Um, in the library, um, let's see if I can find where that site is. Um, here we are. This uses a what's called um, a gadget called Awesome Table. Um, awful name, uh, but wonderful product. Um, and you, you, when you have a spreadsheet of data, this allows you to display that spreadsheet of data without sharing all of the data, but also making. Uh, you can see here, there's hundreds of projects going on in the library in the information directory. And I can choose things uh, that are about research excellence. You can see it filters it down to 18. And I can say, well, I'm uh, only interested in uh, white rose things, let's say. Oh, there we go. There's that, pro there's that project. Or I can say I'm interested in students. Yeah. And you can see it filters. So this allows me to very easily uh, choose different projects um, and find the one um, that was interesting. You can have links off into different parts of the site as well. So it's, it's a way of making a mini database of stuff very easily available because it sits in your spreadsheet and then you add the gadget to your site and um, that's that. That's, that's a great tool. And um, you can see it's been used here again by the Pedagogy Project too. They've got a database of, um, of uh, sorry, of boom, 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 boom of uh, learning resources, um, again, which can be filtered down uh, to find the ones that you're interested in. Um, and lastly, one of the um, great tricks of Awesome Tables is that you can um, display Gantt charts as well. So if you have your data with two dates, then it's, it's very easy then to see them in, in, in like a project view. And you can see, again, it's filterable, so you can say, I just want to look at July, or I just want to look at, at, at a certain project. Very handy thing. So, this is the point where you need to pause the video and um, go play with Google Sites. I want you to go create a site, and it can be for a project, or it could be for an interest, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Um, but just think of that simple navigation and create a people page, maybe, or a resources page. And then try some of the Google gadgets and see if you can maybe share um, uh, if, if you like, contextualize a, a Google folder and say, this is where we put our job sheets or this is where we put our whatevers. Um, and you may want, to, you don't have to do that at this point, you may want to create a Google group of people and they can be the people who can edit this site. 
Uh, again, that could be very useful. Somebody new joins the team, you add them to the group and automatically they can edit this site up. Uh, but they might be the, the only ones who can actually see this site also. So this would be a good thing to get around the table and just say, uh, let's just have a go with these sites together. Let, let's see if we can create a site for this thing. Uh, we're not going to make it public yet. We're going to work on it together. And then if we like it, we could maybe then make it so it's viewable by everyone. So, okay, pause this video. Uh, have a go at this. Um, you can spend five minutes or five days. It's up to you. And I'll see you in the next one.